Hello everyone, welcome to Five Writers Five Minutes, where five of us authors are going to hash about and talk about some stuff that we do uh, when we write our stories. And today we're going to talk about something a little bit controversial. Ooh. We thought we might, yeah, thought we might mix it up. <laughs> there might be a fight in this part. It might be our first Ooh, yeah. podcast with a fight. <laughs> because yeah, that's right. Um, because today we want to actually mess around with the idea of organizing our ideas when we write stories. And um, I know I've met loads and loads of authors who just go, you know what, I kind of just get an idea and I just start. And I've definitely met a bunch of kids who that's what they would prefer to do as well. So um, let's meet our lovely writers um, today. So my name is Deborah Abella. I'm Zanny Louise. I'm Tristan Banks. I'm Leon Tanner and I'm Sarah Armstrong. Let's get to it. <laughs> Let's pistols at dawn. Let's actually <laughs> dive straight in. So I'm not going to um, start talking about organize, uh, organizing my ideas just uh, yet. So you're just start. I'm chickening out, Zanny. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I I will get the party started. Um, and don't don't hit me like what I oh, no. <laughs> <don't be nice. laughs> no. um, So I guess I do a combination of things. I I definitely start by writing. I have to get into the chapter. I have to find the character's voice. My middle grade are written from first person perspective, so they're told by the character. So as Sarah said in the last episode finding that voice is really important. So I just have to find that voice, start writing a scene from the character's point of view. But I do also have to have a bit of a synopsis and a bit of a plan. And although it's not completely detailed, I do actually write out that synopsis uh, before I fully get into the story. So it looks like it's about 300 words, maybe 500 words. It's just the overarching idea for the, for the story. It gives me a bit of a map gives me a little bit of guidance and weirdly I pretty much stick to it and it is it's got the acts in there so act one act two act three it's got the climax it's got the essence of the story because I kind of do need to know that quite early on to be able to yeah. write a story be interested enough to invest several months writing it yeah. so I know I know that and that gives me the confidence that I'm going to have enough material to go in but I, I am sort of constantly revising that the details of that and so I will go and do a beat sheet at, later on down the track but it is a combination of like free writing and having a bit of a guidance mm, interesting I actually when you first mentioned organizing ideas Deb I think a few of us were like organizing ideas what does that mean <laughs> but now that we've started talking about it, I realize I do all of the above you know yeah. all these things that Danny's talking about and I I do organize things one one particularly useful tool for organizing ideas is uh, an app called Scrivener which I think a lot of authors use and uh, it's unlike Microsoft Word which just allows you to write the story in it it has all these little folders and things down on the left hand side mm. there where you can keep you can you basically have sort of an outline of all your chapters you know one file for each chapter sort of thing and then I have all my research together there I might yeah. put music and maps and things over there mm. I might have a holding bay file which mm. is I started doing a holding bay years ago which is where I put all the scenes and chapters that get cut out of the story yes I, I do that in the holding yeah. bay yeah. as a sort of um oh well I'll, just in case I need to come back to it just to make myself feel better yeah. but mm, yes. nothing ever comes back from the holding yeah. bay it's, it's basically <laughs> a uh, a cemetery but I don't tell the ideas that they're going <laughs> um so so yeah I, I realize I actually do organize my ideas quite well and you know I have notes in my phone um, yes. and it seems a bit haphazard because I only reach for that tool when I need it but yeah. um, but actually all of those structures are in place so that um, I'm, I never stop I, I don't, I don't mm. want to ever get stuck and not yeah. know what to write next yeah 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 look I, I I'm a bit like you Tristan I sort of thought oh this is a really hard question to answer and then I I started thinking about it and I thought well I, I do tend to start off like Zanny and find the character's voice and, you know, like maybe write a couple of scenes to see mm -hmm. what they sound like and how they think. But then I start looking for, okay, what might happen in this story? And I'll, I'll just kind of throw stuff down in a notebook, you know, well, this might happen and this might happen. There might be a bank robbery. There might be an alien, you know, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then 
I'll start trying to put that together in different shapes. And sometimes I'll just try out different things and see what works. Well, does the alien come before or after the bank robbery? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I know that the most exciting thing has to happen towards the end, you know, so that's a really good kind of basic thing to kind of hang on to. And I also know that things have to happen for a reason mm -hmm. that I can't just throw in a bank robbery because I, because I think it would be cool. You know, there has to be a really good reason for there to be a bank robbery. So I ask myself a lot of questions like if this character does this thing, what, might that make happen you know what happens as a result of this thing that they do and then what might happen because of that and then how will the character react to that thing so mm. I'm trying to get them deeper and deeper into trouble so that things are getting harder and harder for them and I'm looking for things that will make that will make life worse for them mm. um right. because you know that's what writers do we are essentially really cruel people yes <laughs> um <laughs> so it's it's all about cause and effect for me everything in a story yeah. has to happen for a reason i, I love that balance yeah yeah that balance of not yeah. not being too prescriptive and saying yeah. and working it all out first sort of thing and yeah. being being flexible but also having yeah. enough of an idea of where you might be heading yes. that you're not you're not totally lost and yes. heading in a million different directions that's great I agree. Yeah, yeah, and you're not panicking at the end of the no, day yes. thinking, what on earth am I going to write tomorrow? You know, you've got a bit of an idea where you're heading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like to plan everything before I start writing. I like to start writing with just a sort of a scenario, like okay. a magic girl whose mum disappears herself and the girl mm. must rescue her. Like I just sort of have that and, they, and they're mm -hmm. in a circus. You know, that might be as much as I need to get going. And then I just start writing and I feel my way into it. Then there's a certain point where I need to pause and start thinking about um, yeah. <clears throat> clarifying, you know, what they want, but thinking about where do I want it to go? If I know where I want it to end, and that doesn't mean so much like what's going to be happening, but it's more no. the emotional mm. end. Like, what do I want my character to have realised by the end? How do I want my character to have changed or perhaps sort of, um, you know, refuse to change, you know, absolutely steadfastly refuse to change, which is sort of another possibility. But it's like, how will they have changed and what new understanding will they have and um, will the problem have been solved? Or might yeah. there be a hint of a problem being solved? Because in a short story, you don't necessarily have to tie everything up really neatly. You can just sort of give a big, strong hint of how things are going to end. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, that's so nice. that's what I like to think about is the ending and be really clear on what the character wants and how they don't get it immediately, all the kind yes. of obstacles. The that, yeah, yeah, the ending is the key, isn't it, knowing where you're yeah. heading. The, yeah. the reason I yeah. spent 13 years writing Scar Town, <laughs> I realise, is because I didn't know the ending. Yes, so, that well, does yeah. make a difference. You yeah. can work it out earlier. It's such yeah. so I, I ending, think I your always ending know. might change. Yes. But if you've yeah. just got an ending yeah. to work towards, yeah, exactly. Yes. To work towards. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's so, good. So okay, this isn't the fight fest that I thought it would be because <laughs> <laughs> too <laughs> because, nice. <laughs> well, because I know too that, you know, so Tristan and Leon, they were like organizing ideas. No, I don't organize it. And it turns out Tristan's the most organized person here. <laughs> because it was it's because of you, Tristan. I use Scrivener. And it's uh -huh. like, oh my gosh, I was organized too. before. Yeah. Me yeah. too. Now yeah. I am super organized because of Tristan. And mm. so and I think too, the reason I like to be organized is one one year, a long time ago, um, I did, I pitched a novel to my publisher and I had a generally general sort of idea of what was happening. I sort of knew the character and I just started writing because I thought I'm just too busy to do the plot, the organizing mm. thing. And it was a mess. And I kept on going yeah. into dead ends and thinking, oh, well, maybe she'll do this. And I'd write many, many chapters and thinking, no, that's just boring. And I'd have to throw them away. I literally threw away a novel's worth of words. And mm -hmm. I thought, I will never do that again if I sit down and plan mm -hmm. and roughly, and that change, that will change. And it should change. Yeah. Because as you get to know your characters more, you realize they wouldn't do that actually they would way more do this so i i actually do like planning the other reason i like planning and organizing my ideas beforehand is i like it's fun i like the world building and i like the problem building and um i like knowing that there are fun things coming up 
Yeah. So I actually do a character, a chapter breakdown. So I know kind of roughly wow. what's going to happen and it will change again, that will change, but it means that I, I leave a little Easter egg. I leave a little treat in every little chapter. So as I'm writing a chapter, I go, oh, I'm having fun with this, but oh my gosh, next chapter, um, Arlo and Lizette from the Book of Wondrous Possibilities are going to be kidnapped, you know? And so <laughs> I think that's partly why I love organizing because I make sure it's like a promise to myself that if you keep going, you will have something fun to do in every single chapter. Oh, that's nice. Mm. And that's a promise I to love- the reader too, isn't yeah. it? I think I, so too. I love this idea that yeah. the plot changes as you write. You know, yes. there's mm, that old yeah. saying, um, that no battle plan ever survives first contact with the enemy. Oh, right. And that's mm. what plotting's like. You know, even yeah. if you do a really detailed mm. plot, once you start writing, that can change because characters yeah. head off in their own direction sometimes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So no matter if you are an organiser or not an organiser, I think generally what we're all saying to is you do it in your own way, yep. but ultimately what you want is your story to get more and more and more exciting until that fantastically spectacular exciting moment right at the end so um have fun hope you enjoyed uh this podcast or maybe you're watching us on youtube and uh we'll see you next time see ya bye